there were a number of reasons why, after decades as a sustainability journalist, that I took to uh, examining the horizon and landscape with the pending end of the war on drugs, which I think of as America's worst policy since segregation for a lot of reasons. But what turned out to be the lasting reason why I've stuck with it and in fact why I've become a hemp farmer and entrepreneur and consultant in addition to, and researcher now with the University of Hawaii, the reason is because uh, it's a direct line, regenerative values come back to soil healing. And hemp is one of the most phytoremediative or soil healing plants out there. In the end, the reason why I work in the world of hemp cannabis is about climate change mitigation. The billions of dollars that the cannabis economy provides to the tax base in legal states like California and Oregon and Colorado is about the flowers. So not much was happening with the fiber and I started a year of research for a book that became hemp bound. I found it not just the fiber, but the seeds, which are a nutritive superfood, are going to be uh, integral, integral to uh, revamping our industrial pipeline, making it more regional, more regenerative, and also our dietary system. We obviously we have diabetes and uh, obesity epidemics, and and hemp is a, is a it's an unmitigated superfood. It is uh, ideal ratios of omegas nine, sixes, and threes. The other aspect is that hemp heals soil. We have a real issue with uh, soil toxicity from our century of monoculture, uh, and we're nearing, thankfully, the, the end of the monoculture era but there's been a lot of damage done and hemp helps clean soil while sequestering carbon, creating that essential microclimate in the soil that sequesters carbon and mitigates climate change. So it's, uh, it's just an incredible win-win because it's also a high value crop for farmers. So we're recreating rural communities, all this rural devastation, the end of Main Street, all the box stores coming in. We have a chance to actually have a digital age where farming is the hit profession. Cannabis is a safe legislative issue for politicians on all levels of all parties. Um, it's equally driven in the legalization effort for all sides of the plant is being equally driven by Republicans and Democrats. Um, you can't tell by someone's party affiliation whether they've gotten the memo about how uh, what a positive influence legalization is compared to the war on cannabis. So I think um, stigma uh, is going away. The last battlegrounds I think now are not so much stigma but um, what I think of as the mining of the harbors by the retreating drug warriors, they know they've lost, they deserve to lose, they're wrong, they're on the wrong side of history. They also have a huge pot of federal money that they're loath to have turned off. So they're trying to figure out ways that they can still benefit when the inevitable happens, which is cannabis fully returned, turning to the economy. And one of the things that they're trying to do is float red herrings like driving tests, to, you know, highway stuff. But the reason for that is because of the insane cocktails of pharmaceuticals and alcohol that are the real epidemics. Multiple studies have shown that actually experienced cannabis users are fine. But even if you want to keep those very real multiple studies, peer-reviewed studies, uh, out of the argument, the bottom line is, are you safe to drive or are you not safe to drive? Any study that I'm aware of in any legalization state Highway fatalities are down with ca cannabis legalization, as is, by the way, domestic violence and youth use rates. In short, cannabis hemp returning to the above ground economy is a positive for public safety of every kind, including highway safeties and other uh, qualities that we associate with family values, which are important values to me. At this moment, I'm optimistic that we will see a level playing field when it comes to cannabis and hemp with respect to um, independent and craft operators operating alongside what we might call uh, big ganja or you know whatever it is. Parallel with cannabis hemp's return to the above ground economy is the open source era. This 
period in time where the end game for an entrepreneur is not necessarily to be bought out and become a public company, go public, or have hedge funds invest tens of millions of dollars. It might actually be to have a regenerative company that continues to be lucrative for the people that are associated with it and the community that in which it's placed, providing tax base and all that, for generations to come. I'm not personally game for forcing people to adopt the model that I happen to like best, as long as legislatively, legally, on the, on the, on the, in the real world economy, there is a level playing field that allows independent producers to truly be able to compete with people that have, let's say, a more pharmaceutical model or in general just a, a, a mass model where they want to go by 20, what I consider 20th century business models of, of hedge funds and, and, uh, and, and stock trading and all that business. I'm working with policy in more than half a dozen states in cultivating hemp policy, and especially when it comes to get making sure that hemp and cannabis farmers have access to free genetics that they can replant as free farmers, that's a big one for me. And I'm, I'm noticing that state regulators are aware of and sensitive to it, and many states are implementing independent farmer-friendly policies when it comes to hemp cannabis. So we will see big ag, and we will see big tobacco, and all of that on farm, big farmer getting into hemp cannabis, but we will also see free farmers growing the finest and best hemp cannabis for all purposes, whether industrial, health maintenance, uh, social, uh, medicinal, whatever it is, you're going to be looking for, if you're smart in my view, your local craft cultivator and not trying to find something out of an orange bottle in a publicly traded company. Because of congressional bipartisan support for hemp and cannabis, I'm confident that in the next few years we will see acceptable or better legislation on the federal level that returns this plant to where it begin where it belongs which is just being treated like any other plant we're moving to an era of THC irrelevance and what i mean by that is the legislative end game for people that want to see cannabis and hemp fully utilized to the best uh, quality and for the best uh, long term regenerative values and also for the best of the economy is a situation where we don't delineate between cannabis and hemp at all. We have a cannabis plant that is grown. It doesn't matter what its THC is. If you are utilizing it for its fiber qualities, let's say next generation plastics, clothing, paper, it never matters what the THC would have been in the flower, which is the only part that has psychoactive properties if there are any. If you are using the seed for food or industrial lubricants, again, irrelevant. Cannabinoids don't reside in that part of the plant. You could grow a plant that had 12% THC in the flower, it's irrelevant. The flower is never leaving an industrial facility or a farm to get to the public. If a flower application, such as something that might be used in a vaporizer uh, under a social situation or something that might be used in a medicinal situation, something that might be used in a uh, high THC massage oil, whatever it is, if a final product is leaving an industrial setting or a farm setting for public consumption that is above a regionally decided THC threshold that is for adult use, that region, that state or county, may choose to regulate it for adult use along the lines of alcohol or tobacco. But other than that, it should make no difference at all the THC level that is grown. We're gonna see what uh, friends of mine and I like to call hashtag one plant. There is not a separation between hemp and any other kind of cannabis.